Well, good morning, fuckers. How are you? Let me tell you how I'm doing today. It's about 6 a.m. right now. And uh, today is my youngest daughter, Nova's birthday. She turns eight. And I thought I would uh, do that super cool dad thing and do something special for her. So uh, I snuck over to her house and I thought I would creep in and sleep on the couch and then wake her up in the morning and um, have pancakes with her, do the whole thing. She's online schooling right now, so I figured, you know, I'd start the day off right for her. Anywho, that went over like a fart in church. Um, came through the doorway and her dog started barking at me. And I could hear Nova say, there's a shadow in the hallway. And uh, as I'm creeping down towards the guest room, all of a sudden I hear her mother come barreling out of her room. And let's just say, in theory, and in reality for that matter, a woman that's empowered and that holds a gun, something beautiful about it. Until uh, you're at the end of it. Anyway, so, note to oneself, don't try too hard, mom and dad, dad. Uh, next time, I think I'm just going to wait until she wakes up and do the right thing, which I guess I'm learning as I go. Anyway, funny as that is, this post is only, uh, that's only a small bit of this one. Uh, the reason being, Nova's eight. Obviously, she doesn't do social media, so I'm not going to sing her happy birthday or anything. This is, uh, uh, this goes a little deeper, so hang with me here for a second. First off, um, I really want to get to the song, um, Maybe It's Time. What an amazing reception. I mean, the, the reviews and the reactions we're getting, uh, there are three R's right there for you. Uh, our Richter, there's four. Um, it's incredible, and it goes to show how powerful the song and uh, how powerful the message this really is. So, thank you again to my family in uh, 6 a.m. Nikki, I love you sincerely. Thank you. Uh, this was very special uh, to be a part of this, so I owe you one. And to Corey, Tommy, Brantley, AWOL, and Slash, fucking, I'm still excited about even saying those names. Um, which brings me to. Uh, really why well, I want to post this because it being my daughter's birthday you know I'm, I'm extremely excited I'm very happy it's a very special moment for me and for her obviously um, but with everything going on in the world right now putting on that smile is very difficult you know you, everything from fires in California to the storms coming in down south to what's happening up in Wisconsin and, th and just throughout the country period um, I know I use this word a lot, but it is overwhelming, to say the least. I mean, it's... <sighs> Yesterday, if it wasn't for the tools that I've gained along this road in recovery, and if it wasn't for being sober and being in a state of mind that I knew I had to reach out and go beyond myself and the power I hold within, uh, I, I had a really rough, rough one, um, and I'm trying to tell you guys, I'm fucking human. It's tough on everybody. I'm dealing with the same shit all of you are. Um, so I reached out to some of my heavy metal brethren, uh, David from Disturbed, Clint and uh, LJ from Seven Dust, and uh, Ben from Breaking Benjamin, and we got on a thread and we started talking about our kids. And uh, just for a brief second, you know, we just kind of went over the fact on the fire that's inside of us right now and how we just can't wait to get back on fucking tour. And we know that you guys are, you're hurting too. And um, so I just wanted to reassure you that you can do it. It's possible. There's a fire within all of us. You have to harness it. And when it starts getting dim, you reach out. And the ones that care they'll feed that for you so on that note sorry to end that on such a sour case um, but there's always something to look towards that will better whatever's going on I promise you you just gotta dig for it enough said you guys everything that's gonna be coming at you this week breathe in breathe out 
Keep on keeping on. Be well. And when the sun an encore. Hmm. What do you think, Thor? Wanna see backups? He said yes. I'm writing this in case I'm gone tomorrow. I'm writing this in case I've moved along Just know that all the things you want to borrow And that life is not a game, it's a song So wipe away the tears for me Know that we've made history And know that no one ever really dies <clears throat> What you got? When the lights go down Know that I am never far away And when the sun burns out, I'll be waiting on the brighter side of bay. Indeed. Another sunset down behind me, another day comes crashing in. There's a whispering wind blowing, and a storm is coming in. I can hear the trains, they're rolling to a place I've never been. I can see through the horizon I made that part up What I've become and what I've been I'm waiting for the one to save me Nothing else falls in place Waiting for the end to take me Blinded by the sun Breaking down the wall Well, thank you. Easy crowd. And the darkness settles. In. Or negative energy, and when they... What's up? All this talk of recovery got me a little twisted up. So I wanted to share a few things with you guys. Um, oh yeah, sorry, quartz. Yeah, these are neat, right? So uh, these are tools I picked up along the road. Um, some I've used for a lot of years. Um, these are actually really great. They absorb negative energy and when they've had enough, they break and you get new ones. I'll put them away because it's distracting, I know. But yeah, those are my uh, Zen stones. So, I was going through a lot of stuff today because I have to remind myself, too, on why I'm sober, why I continue to be sober, and why I plan on staying that way. And so I have to sit back every now and then and look at how far I've come and what got me here. And I think that's really important. Uh, so I was going through some pictures, different boxes today. Um, I came across some cool pics. 
one of my favorite dudes on earth, Lejean from Seven Dust, LJ, with me and Nova. Fucking love that guy. I have a saying, if you have a problem with Lejean, you have a problem. Love this cat. Anyway, so I found that. Um, found this picture, really cool. Me and Nova and JD from Corn. This is funny as fuck too. Um, now I'm gonna get back to why I'm talking about War is the Answer. So while we were recording War is the Answer, we were doing a cover of the song from Cake, Going the Distance. And it did not go the distance, and I'll tell you why. I had sent it to JD, Jonathan Davis, and I had asked him to fucking redo it with me. And he sent me back after he heard it, a one word email. No. So I never got to thank you for that, John. I love you, man. It was fucking great, j Double. You saved my ass. So yeah, I found some other ones. I got me and Lexi here uh, in our Boston Celtics jerseys. Paul Pierce, Garnett, Ray Allen. That's the team. My first sober tour after recovery. Um, that's my little girl, Nova, at the Cricket Pavilion in Arizona. Uh, amazing moment i couldn't even go into detail on how big that is to me uh, and the fact it was caught on camera is really cool my son and i our hands and i don't know if you can tell that or if you're into palm reading but um my son and i have the same lifeline in our fucking hands pretty crazy right there's another story for it so anyway i'm going through this i found this this is crazy cool so i got this the first time we played with kid rock uh, it was a festival date, and Bobby was going on stage, and uh, I was like, I gotta meet him, I gotta meet him, and I'm backing up, and I'm looking around, I had this fucking hat on, I'm like, this is so cool, I'm a huge Kid Rock fan, and I stepped on somebody's foot, and I turned around, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, and I look up, and there's Bob, and I was like, motherfucker, first impressions, and he just looked down, and he goes, excuse me, and he walked to stage, it was pretty cool, so that was years and years ago, but I've kept this hat, that was cool. My uh, driver, Jeff, gave me this bracelet. I wear it when I'm at home, and uh, when we're on the road, he wears it. It's kind of a, a, a it's a, yeah, it's a kind of a peace charm. Uh, he is responsible for my life 10 months out of the year, and um, probably my best buddy, man. Set up in that front lounge and talk about some crazy shit. So, brings me to this. Where is the answer? When we were recording War is the Answer, I was actually staying between Jeremy, my old drummer, Jeremy's house on his couch, and uh, Zoltan's. I hadn't had a house yet, uh, you know, blah, 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 whatever, you don't even hear that. So I had written half of that album in Jeremy's house. And um, today my management company sent me something that I wanted to share with you guys because I think it's really cool and it took me back into why I'm here. Jeremy sent me this. These are the actual lyrics from the song Burn It Down. You see the date up there on the top, 2009. You can see the scribbles and everything. Now this was the actual piece of paper that I had when I was in Jeremy's and I was listening to the song and I wrote it and I ran and I was like, dude, fuck, I got to go. I put that in the other. I just put it out of my head. I never thought again about it or anything. And um, so he sent me this. Hey man, I found these lyrics in a box. Thought you'd like to have them. I hope all is well. And he fucking dated it. Who does that? Talk about cold. And he autographed it for me. Not sure how I should take that. But um, Jeremy, if you're watching, man, Thank you. It means a lot to me. Uh, the last time I physically saw Jeremy was at the end of the Blue on Black video shoot. Sorry, medicinals. Um, and we made our peace, we said our goodbyes, and it was that was that. You know, um, I, I've always respected him. I mean, for God's sake, his birthday is a day ahead of mine. Um, so we were always just very, very close from the get-go. And I love Jeremy very deeply. Um, when he decided to leave, I gave him my blessings. And I'm very proud of him for doing what he's doing now. And even though uh, 
not going to say it's my favorite band on earth. It's like this hat. I guess it just depends on how you wear it, what angle you look at it at. But I'm proud of you, Jeremy, nonetheless, for doing everything you've ever wanted to do. That's always how you've been. And that's my Capricorn brother right there. So anyway, the fact that Jeremy sent these to me and that he saved them in a time like now, when recovery means so much to me. Now this is years, years ago, when he first started getting sober. And the Antichrist, that is me, was not. And he was fighting tooth and nail. He literally came to me one day and said, you are risking my sobriety. That's how bad it was. When he wrote his book, I got bitter about that. I mean, it just rolled. And so I never really got to tell him how sorry I am for tormenting him and for torturing him. And that hour and a half on stage doesn't always make up for it. When you're spending the other 22 and a half hours resenting someone, not wanting to be around them, uh, hiding, which is what it came down to. And, uh, so at the end of the Blue on Black video, I told him I loved him and I understood. And that was it. So until today, I hadn't heard anything from him. I stay sober because I do remember and I've carried a lot of this weight with me. And a big part of recovery is forgiveness. Forgiving others, but forgiving yourself, myself. And I haven't. I have a long way to go. I have a lot of bridges to repair. And um, some will never be put back in, back in place. Looking back on it, I don't regret a fucking day because I wouldn't be here without him. And I wouldn't be here without any of you. Oof. I guess that's it. I just wanted to share. <laughs> Take care. Recovery awareness month. What's up? Neck deep in a liquid. Boy, that was the story for a long time, wasn't it? Let's get to the facts. August 21st, maybe it's time. This year I decided to do something really special for National Recovery Awareness Month. I joined forces with some of the fucking industry's greats. Starting with Nikki Six and my family from 6AM. Thank you for having me aboard. A couple small names in there. You may have heard of them for all you flat earthers. Joe Elliott. Arguably one of the greatest rock singers of all time from Def Leppard. Slash. Don't even have to say any more than that, do I? Mm, fucking goosebumps. If you wanted it, you got it. The one and only, Corey fucking Taylor. Alongside with a couple of my faves, Bradley Gilbert, my homies from AWOL Nation, and Tommy Vex from Bad Wolves. That's right. Maybe it is time. Maybe it's time we made a united front and stood together. Let the world hear your voice. This disease took my life, literally. And stats being stacked against me, I fought back. And I'm here to tell you, you can too. Two years ago, these cats wouldn't have even fucking taken my phone call. And I can't say I blame them. But today I stand strong and I stand proud. And I want to thank every single one of these guys for inviting me in. So, this Friday, Catch a tune. Maybe it is time. I was supposed to do some professional commercial for all of you. And you know me. I'd rather just do it this way. Check it out. Drowning in the bottom of a bottle. Running from a moon. Hello, hello again. What's up, everybody? So check this out. Um, I was outside chilling just enjoying the stars and doing some riding. And Baby, as you guys remember, 
starts fucking going crazy. And I mean, like, bonkers. So anyway, I come rushing inside and thinking one of three things, you know, it's got to be fucking ghosts, um, an intruder, or her just being a puppy. And, of course, I was hoping it'd be door number three. So anyway, I come into the bathroom where she's just fucking going off. And I look down here. Check this out. So I just had, like, you know, sprayed my house spray the other day. Watch this. What in the fuck is that? Look at that fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like a fucking hybrid of a vinegar rune, which any of you that don't know is a desert bug that's like gnarly shit. So, I just had to uh, share. So, thank God for baby. Don't they say that uh, we swallow a certain number of spiders every year while we're sleeping? Yeah. Good night. People shit. Cool stuff. My peeps, what's up? I'm sitting here in my favorite little nook in my house. Spend about, uh, I don't know, try to spend an hour a day anytime I'm home here. Uh, separation, you know, just uh, doing people shit, cool stuff, reading, uh, I was just reading an article in here uh, about nanotechnology, nanomedics, to be precise, by an article actually by a guy, uh, Tom Ireland, and he talks about how this shit's going to, uh, you know, revolutionize medicine within like the next decade, it's pretty crazy stuff, check it out, cool, sorry, lost in yeah, wouldn't you say in it? I use them, love them. No corn syrup, no sugars, raw deal. This isn't a commercial, but I'm being true to you. Good stuff, vegan. Anywho, so, uh, you know, I try to read as many of the DMs and um, personal messages that you guys send me as I can, but as I know, you know, it gets a little overwhelming. It gets a lot overwhelming. And I find myself answering a lot of the same questions. Sorry, again. Rude. Uh, so I figured that I'd, I'd put up this post. And um, I'm going to let you guys ask me publicly anything you want. Straight up. And I will answer publicly anything you post. Minus things that are personal, dealing with my kids, you know the rules, come on now, that's just respectful. And uh, anything to do with the band that I can't answer or industry-wise, such as tour dates, stuff like that, those things are in place for a reason. This is uh, more of just a fun thing. Anything you guys uh, wanna get off your chest, you're more than welcome to it. Like I said, I'm not gonna pull this down. I'm gonna leave it up for as long as this fucking page is running. So, uh, open the gates. Out come the wolves. Let's have some fun. Motherfuckers! What's up? Sitting here watching basketball. Watching Nola versus San Antonio. It's odd. I won't lie. But uh, it's cooler than not. It's good to see them out there, you know, throwing down, giving it their all. Matter of fact, last night I got stuck in uh, an inner war. Colorado boy facing off against my team, the Knights. Would have been happy with the outcome either way. Um, definitely stoked, though, that the Knights are going in. <clears throat> go, Knights, go. You know, I got to point this out. All the information we've shared, all the conversations we've had, the things we've discussed, and I thought we would have come farther than we have. There's still so many of you focused on how I wear my fucking baseball hat. Why? So, this is for you. Matter of fact, here, look. Check it out. Whoa! Holy shit! You're right! I feel fucking normal. God, maybe I should run out and get me one of them face spaces or they're my books. Pick up on some chickadees. I'm feeling spunkier. 
Thanks for the uh, fashion tip, everybody. I owe you one. Be well. What's up, everybody? Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, depending where you're at inside. What's up, Brad? Hello, hello. So, uh, Brad and I are going through the news. We do it every morning, kind of, you know, facts check. Uh, going over the Kanye Biden write in beat off. Uh, that's interesting. And then uh, Joe Rogan going to Texas. Love it. Come to Vegas, man. Oh, you've been to Vegas. You know what's up. Colorado? AZ? Seattle? Uh, so anyway, I usually don't do this, but last night, I was having a real hard time sleeping uh, with everything going on in the world. The new puppy baby, by the way, doing great. Um, you know, it's just a lot of stuff uh, to digest. So anyway, better than z just like melatonin, but tastes amazing. Try it out. I'm not just saying it. No hangover either. That's a big deal. And then I do this in the morning. Good shite. So, anything else? That's really it for now. That's really it? Yeah. All right, it's going to be that kind of day? We'll see what happens. Well, hopefully we can get beat off. At least by writings. That's true. Indeed. Enjoy your day, everyone. Ladies and germs, what's up? How you doing? Hope everybody had a great weekend. I know mine was fucking eventful. Matter of fact, let me walk you through it. So last time I checked in, I was uh, in my, my garage working on a shed for my backyard. I'd forgotten the base paint and I had to go back uh, to get more supplies. Well, halfway back up, I'm looking at my, my boy, Bo, as all of you know. Hey, Bo. He's taking a nap and he's tuckered. I'll explain in a minute. And I'm like, you know what he needs? A fucking dog house. So that's what I did. I started working this, this shed idea into a dog house. And about three quarters of the way through, I'm looking at it and it's fucking massive. And for somebody as small as him, you know, it's just too much. And it got me thinking, you know what Bodie really needs? A partner in crime. A, honestly, yeah, you're right, a friend. So, I mean, I don't like hanging out with me. I don't like me. I guarantee you fucking, you know, he's got to be semi-miserable. All the wet food in the world doesn't make up for that kind of lost time. So I'm at the retaliator shoot with Zoe and Chris, the new zombie movie. Mm, true horror coming at you. Watch that shit go. And um, I'm talking to Zoe about it. And he goes, Gracie, his better half, just had found... A baby pit bull, about eight months old, um, wasn't in great shape, still not in great shape. And if I ever find the people who had her before me, we'll keep this positive. So I'm talking to Zoe about it, and I'm like, this, this can't be coincidence, man. I was just talking to Brad about trying to find Bo a friend. And he's like, holy shit, you've got to see this picture. And he showed me the picture, and my heart fucking melted. So yesterday, I took Bo over to Zoe's house uh, to introduce the two of them, see if they got along. It was like love at first fucking sight. I mean, it was hysterical. It took them a matter of minutes, and they were just like in each other's arms. So I want to take a second and introduce everybody to the new Moody. She's a little skittish. Like I said, she wasn't treated right. She has a couple little scars above her nose where it looks like they had a muzzle on her way too fucking tight. Um, but here she is, ladies and gents. Baby Moody. Hi, baby. Say hi. Isn't she fucking adorable? So, there it is. That's what I did this weekend. All's good on this side, you know what I mean? Babies here. Retaliators is getting done. Singles, fourth week at number fucking one. Thank you. Most of all, Bo's happy. Life's not always bad. And definitely cannot rain all the time. Be well. You guys wanna know how much I really miss being on the road? 
how out of my element I really am. I grew up, my father, my grandfather, on both sides, my uncles, we all used our hands. We would work with wood and, and metals and materials and carpenters and craftsmen and Well, there are some things that just aren't as simple as learning how to fucking ride a bike again. Uh, I set this up the other day, got ready for everything, I primed it, got all the materials I thought I needed, and I let it go for a day, let it sit and, and, uh, and set, set. Came back today, I was going to do the trim, I was going to start doing the base paint. The one fucking thing I need to accomplish my goal, which is to take this clubhouse and turn it into a shed for my yard, is fucking base paint. Wanna take a wild fucking guess on what I forgot? Yeah. Smile and wave, everybody. What's up, everyone? How you doing? 
Uh, so I've been getting hundreds upon hundreds of emails from you guys asking me why I'm not on here more often, uh, vocalizing and you know, expressing my opinions on uh, the world at the moment. So I'm going to take a sec and uh, throw a, a couple things out to you. Um, where do I start? Well, to begin with, I, uh, as anyone else, I'm looking forward to seeing what's around the corner. You know what I mean? Um, this has come so far, but the change is really yet to begin. So uh, I'm interested to see where we go from here. Um, you can already tell there's a lot of tension, a lot of indecisiveness, um, misleading, you know, so on and so forth. But just like you all, I'm very tense as well. You know, I'm interested to see uh, where these parties are going. And, and to be honest with you, a, a couple of you threw it at me. Um, yes, I am disappointed with the left and the right at this point. Um, as somebody put it out there, I thought that maybe, uh, the, what did you say? Um, Biden the Band-Aid, uh, he's just there to cover up the infection so that nobody else has to stare at it. Thought that was pretty good. And the other side was uh, Trump the T-Rex, uh, big fucking mouth, little fucking arms. I thought that was pretty, that was pretty witty. Um, so no, I mean, I'm, I'm just as disappointed as what's going on on either side as any of you. Um, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with it, to be honest with you. Um, and me having kids, you know, I, I have a lot uh, at risk as well on that, on that side of it. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to preach on what I think you should do. Um, that's really, if there is such beauty to be found in all of this, that is it. Is that the winds of change are upon us and that we each have a chance to fucking make a difference. Where you choose to go with it is on you. Um, I don't think people should let themselves get bullied into one side or the other. Um, I think you all, you know, you're in the right frame of mind and now's the time to make decisions for yourself. Uh, I posted it the other day, you know, if you don't like who you stand with, it's time to run. Um, you know, I grew up in a family of military. Uh, we had all branches in my family, stem far as, as far back as I, as I can remember. Um, and we were taught one thing, and that is we abide by the bond, the truth, and the blood that is our Constitution. Um, that is something that was bestowed on me at a very, very young age. And um, I think we all need to remember that uh, at the end of the day. Uh, as American people, we have the right and <sighs> deservingly so we need to execute with it. Um, I, I haven't posted anything about, uh, you know, the, the chaos in the streets. Um, you know, I, I, as long as it's peaceful and no one's hurting uh, another person or taking out what one party is responsible for on another party, then, you know, I, I truly, I think it's necessary. Uh, I watched something the other night with Samuel L. Jackson talking about how uh, he protested back in the 70s. And uh, it's very interesting, you should look into it. And there, there are just ways to go about this. And to be literate and educated about it is a big deal. Um, to be empathetic, uh, but to also understand that you are not responsible for somebody else's actions. You have a chance to fucking stand on your own two feet, America. Uh, I don't know how else to put that. Um, I'm really, I'm going to say this. This whole Juneteenth thing about our president going down to uh, Tulsa and doing his uh, first uh, political rally is very, very touchy. Um, this could go very fucking bad or it could be potentially very good. Um, and so I am, you know, biting my nails just like the rest of you with that too. Um, uh, the abolishing the police force thing, I'm not going to get into. I personally think that there are so many good men and women out there that that, that badge stands for something to them. And I think to put them in, in any situation where they're in, in fucking harm's way for taking the heat for somebody else's fucked up actions. I mean, the saying goes, you know, an eye for an eye leaves everybody blind. Again, it's just how I was raised. So a lot of this, again, is just my opinion. I'm not trying to tell you one way or the other. You can fucking hate me for it. Or you can just blow it off as, you know, they're like assholes. 
Anyway, man, I hope you guys are taking care of each other. I truly do. Um, I'm still paying attention to the COVID-19 shit. Uh, I hope you guys are trying your hardest to do so as well. And um, other than that, man, I say it all the time, but I mean it. Be well. Take care. Good evening, everyone. Let me start this by saying you're about to be thoroughly fucking entertained. And no, this fur coat's not about to catch a blaze, and where am I going to be burned to a cinder? Wishful thinking, maybe next time. No, this is about a good friend of mine, Brian Steele Medina from the band Jedi Syndrome, and myself sitting down and discussing entertainers. A lot of which are online these days due to the virus doing what they can to entertain. Now, I couldn't be prouder to be a part of that circle. I think it's really fucking cool. However, there are a few of them that are taking it far too far, too far. Over dramatic, worried about how their jowls look and if the angle's right and what they're wearing and blah, 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 blah. Well, be it not me to fall in line, I decided to do something different. Not only am I going to sing for you a song that I have never performed live, but instead of making you look at my ugly mug for the next two and a half minutes, Brian and I have concocted something special. So with no further ado, Brian, roll camera. God forbid. There was a time when I could believe the future was bright and unjaded. Now things have changed, nothing is real, everything clear slowly faded. God. Yeah. 
Some call me a renegade, the enemy. What's up, everybody? Ivan Moody here, sending a massive shout out to my newly found friend and partner in crime, Mr. Corey Marks. As of this week, you entered the top 10 of rock radio. That is major, my man. Telling you what, almost unheard of, and nobody more deserving than you, sir. So congratulations to you. Not only to bear witness to it, but to be a part of it is a pleasure. Thank you again. And I gotta tell you, when I went to my mother and I explained that I was gonna be doing a track with Travis Tritt, Travis Tritt, but you know, oh, Travis Tritt. Well, I became very moot very fast. So I appreciate it, I owe you one. And uh, I gotta say, man, Mick, you know how I feel about you, but I'm gonna show the rest of the world. Mick Mars, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Metal, that's right, baby. So anyway, um, again, Everybody on board with this, that's a Motley crew. Kevin Churko, Jackie Kaiser, and all the fucking people at Rock Radio that are keeping this dream alive, proving to the world that rock ain't going anywhere. As a matter of fact, we're just getting started. To everybody else, be true, be you. Talk to you soon. Corey, see you around the bend, brother. Hey, what's up, everybody? You can hear Nova in the background. We're actually out uh, playing in the sun today. So I have a question that maybe somebody out there can answer for me. I'm looking for a song, and I cannot for the fucking life of me remember who sang it. So maybe you guys can help me. Now forgive me, I don't remember the lyrics, but the melody in the chorus goes something like this. You could make me turn eternally. You could make me eternally. And I cannot for the life of me remember who fucking sings it. So if anybody out there wants to email me, DM me, and tell me if you have any ideas, I'd really appreciate it. Again, hope everybody's doing well, man. We're in this together. Later. Check it out. So as everybody knows, I've been trying to learn how to play the guitar better. It's not that I don't know how to play, you know, minor chords. It's just that um, it's an art form, and I have a serious appreciation for it. So I want to take lessons from the best. I want to know how they do it. Uh, this guitar right here was actually given to me by a young man by the name of Tom Maxwell. He plays for a band called Hell Yeah. And uh, I've actually known Tom's years and years he used to play in a band that I toured with called Nothing Face so anyway they gave this to me at the uh, very end of that last tour with Hell Yeah of course I got all the guys on it Vinny included along with the King and uh, so I figured if I'm gonna take lessons I'm gonna start calling the best so let's start here I'm gonna give Tom kind of a call right now and see what he says watch if anybody can help me out it's my boy Yo, what's up, dude? How you doing, man? All right, what are you up to, man? Just chilling out here in Vegas, dude. How's Baltimore? Doing all right, man. We're all just kind of hunkered down, you know, with this whole virus thing. So, how was that last tour, man? I love that last album, dude. That was fantastic, man. Thanks, dude. It was cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Sure. It was like getting cold though. We went up to Canada. You know how it is up there. Just like. They get the winter, they get the winter way quicker than we do. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to be creative, man. I'm trying to make use of my time right now. So I actually called you with a favor in mind. Now, let me finish. It's it's kind of big. You're one of the greats, man. I've known you for fucking years, and I'm trying to learn how to play the fucking guitar. Um, I dude, I, I'm so unsuccessful at this, I am failing epically. And so I was hoping maybe I could talk you into giving me a couple lessons, you know, possibly sit down, FaceTime, do whatever. How do you feel? Man, dramatic pause. Yeah. I, I, I think uh, you, uh, you really want to do that, huh? You want to learn how to play guitar? Well, I mean, yeah, if I can do it right, of course. I think that's a fucking terrible, terrible idea, dude. I don't think, I don't think you're cut out for it, man. It's, 
it's just too complicated, you know what I mean? There's just strings, and you gotta learn how to tune it, and shit, you know, it takes a lifetime just to learn how to fucking hold a guitar pick, you know what I mean? And you, know, you got you got tiny ass fingers, dude. What if you drop your pick? How are you gonna fucking find it and pick it up in time? You know what I mean? So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I don't think it's a good idea, dude. I really don't, man. I think. What if you did like something? Well, I'm just being a. What if you did? What if, what if you fucking took up cooking or something? Like learn how to. You know, churn butter or something. You like butter, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love butter, of course. Yeah, who doesn't? There, it, well, see, there you go, man. It's, it, I, I think, look, you're a, fuck, you're a singer, dude. You've been doing it. You've been doing it for a long time, and I think, you know, you're, you're almost pretty good at that, and you're almost there. I think you should stick to that, and, you know, fuck me. Just don't even think about learning how to play guitar, dude. It's just, just you're not coordinated enough to play guitar, dude. Right, right, right. I think just I'm being honest, man. I love you, brother, but <laughs> are you serious? You're being serious, though. This is fucked up. Oh my god, you're like the one guy. You break. Can you hear me, dude? Oh. Can you hear? Can you hear? Me? Oh, that's fucked up. Oh my god, I'm not going to say that didn't hurt a little bit, because I'd be lying. Well, uh, yeah, um, all of a sudden I'm craving butter. Next. Let's fucking roll, man. Burning bridges. Let's get on. <clears throat> it's been a long dark road I remember why It meant the world to me it's been a long dark day and a cold black night and it still gets hard to see cause they don't know me and they never
It's been a long, dark road, but I remember why it meant the world to me. It's been a long, dark day and a cold, black night, and it still gets hard to see. Cause they don't know me And they never will No, they don't know why Or how it feels to live to live It's been a long dark road I still remember why this world is soft and bleak Well it's a shallow pond I'm swimming in and it makes it hard to breathe Cause they don't know me And they never will No, they don't Faster than a bullet, terrifying scream, enraged and full of anger, he's half man and half machine, rides the metal monster, breathing smoke and fire, closing in with vengeance, soaring high, he is the painkiller, this is the painkiller. Planets devastated, mankind's on its knees. A savior comes from out the skies in answer to their pleas. Through boiling clouds of thunder, blasting bolts of steel, evils going under deadly wheels. He is the painkiller. This is the painkiller. Faster than a laser bullet, louder than an atom bomb. Chromium-plated boiling metal brighter than a thousand suns. Flying high on rapture, stronger, free and brave, never more encaptured, they've been brought back from the grave. With mankind resurrected, forever to survive, returns from Armageddon to the skies. He is the painkiller, this is the painkiller. Wings of steel painkiller, deadly wheels painkiller. This is the painkiller. He is the painkiller. Pain, pain, killer, killer. Pain, pain, killer. Ladies and Germans, how are you? So, as I announced a few days back, I've been uh, teaching myself how to play guitar. I've been going online. I even FaceTimed a few friends of mine um, to try to see if I could get some lessons. The reality of it is, I'm just not great. But, like I said, I am determined. However, 
to make this simple, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start reaching out to some of my guitar player friends, whether it be Dan Donegan, Father Zach, Corey Marks, uh, who knows? You know, I'm going to dig into my black book and see who I can find so I can pull some of this crazy shit off with you guys and give you what I promised. However, you guys know what's about to happen. I've had it up to here with this shit. Enough said. Let's get moody with this motherfucker, shall we? And for anybody at home, just so you know, the reason I can do this and have fun with it is because we're endorsed. I can just call Zoe and have him get me a new one. Here we go, people. Swing, baba!
What's up, everybody? Ladies and germs, gents and gender benders. Where the fuck did that come from? Friday the 13th, otherwise known as the day the earth stood still. Sitting here with my main man, Bo, quarantining ourselves, trying to be safe, catching up on some good reading. Thought I'd answer some emails, see how everybody's handling this shit. It's always uh, not funny, but funny to me how people react in times like this. Um, went to the store yesterday, and it was like Black Friday for fucking toilet paper. Jesus. Anyway, remember, wash your hands, cover your mouth, keep a safe distance, respect one another. And um, you ever notice how shit like this brings out the total douche in some people? Like I just read The Exploited had announced they're not canceling their tour because they don't want to be like Green Day. The fuck does that have to do with anything? Tell me.